We've all been blindsided by a high cell phone bill, right? Well, Simple Mobile has decided it doesn't have to be like that. Founded on the idea that your mobile phone is an extension of your own personal freedom, Simple Mobile is a great way to do wireless. It's super easy to join Simple. Just use your own GSM phone, purchase a Simple Mobile SIM card, activate one of Simple Mobile's unlimited plans, and then follow the easy process to set up Simple Mobile on your phone. It really is that simple. To learn more, click here or at the link in the description below to find out how you can start saving money and get in on the simple way of going wireless. Last year's Nexus 5 was a wedge of LG-built polycarbonate that was remarkable for its modern specs and low price tag and basically nothing else. This year, things are different. With a huge footprint and a price point to match, the Nexus 6 stands out in a way its predecessor never did. But how much better is it, really? And which should you buy if you're shopping for the purest Android around? I'm Michael Fisher with Pocket Now, here to help you find out in Nexus 6 versus Nexus 5. First, let's address the Shamu in the room. The size difference here might seem obvious in silhouette, but it's not until you slap these phones side by side that the absurdity of the Nexus 6 really becomes apparent. A one-inch increase in screen size and the move to front-firing speakers makes the 6 substantially taller and wider, which also makes it much harder to use one-handed. The Nexus 5 is what Alex Trebek might call a potent portable. The Nexus 6 is a borderline ridiculous brick. But get past the size difference and you start to see all the ways Motorola has improved on LG's take on the Nexus. The nondescript plank of plastic has been replaced by a curved, metal-rimmed chassis with Motorola's characteristic finger dimple and the bold Nexus branding giving the backplate a look that, yeah, is a little gaudier than last year's and a little wobblier on the tabletop, but at least it's got character. At least it's not so darn boring. The same is true for the displays. While there's not much difference in pixel density here, bring up a picture with a lot of contrast and color and watch the Nexus 6 take the 5 to school. Some of this is expected whenever you're comparing AMOLED and IPS, but the Nexus 5 display always struck me as washed out and dull, even when it was new, so it wouldn't take much in my book for the Nexus 6 to show it up here. Still, the 5 will probably appeal more to purists. The newer Motorola panel suffers from a gray-green tint to its whites and a crazy pink tone when taken to the lowest brightness setting, problems the 5 doesn't have. Also, if you spend more of your time in the waking hours, you'll probably appreciate the Nexus 5's slightly brighter output in daylight. Where the Nexus 6 shines is in the dark. It can get far dimmer than the Nexus 5 can manage, and that's something I, as a bedtime reader, really like to see. Also, check out the total bottomless blacks of the 6 next to the milky grays of the 5. Accuracy aside, the Nexus 6 definitely packs the more striking display in this comparison. Beneath those screens, the specs hold no surprises on the Nexus 6. A newer generation processor, 50% more RAM, bigger battery, better cameras, you name it. You've seen the spec sheets. Of course, the 6 can bench more than the 5. What matters is how that translates into real-world usage. And because both of these are Nexus phones, they're both running the latest version of Android, 5.0 Lollipop. So this section, instead of being devoted to software, we're calling day-to-day. -day. And on a day-to-day -day basis, damn, do I miss the Nexus 5's notification light. While Motorola did apparently build one into the Nexus 6, it's right behind the top speaker grill, it's disabled in the software, so you need to rely on Lollipop's lock screen notifications to keep you in the loop as to what's going on. That's fine, and the 6 will wake up when picked up or removed from a pocket to let you know what you've missed, but there's something so simple and efficient about a color-coded flasher to let you know that someone's trying to get a hold of you. Plus, it's been a staple of the Nexus lineup since the first generation, so here's hoping Google enables it in a future software revision so we don't have to get root to play with it. Let's come back to the size issue for a second because it's such a significant part of this comparison. Frankly, the 6's added pounds make it harder to use in almost every state. It can't fit in a pocket as easily. It's more awkward to talk on. It's almost impossible to reach the notification shade or even the far side of the keyboard with one hand. It doesn't have the soft touch the Black Nexus 5 does, so it's more slippery, which makes it easier to drop. And what's more, 
Google has made no effort to use the added screen size intelligently, with no multi-window and no toggles to trip the notification shade, as we've seen on other phones. But if you're okay with this, if you've got giant hands, or you're cool with being essentially forced to use your phone two-handed, well then of course everything else is better. Games, Netflix, YouTube, even basic web browsing is much more satisfying on the Nexus 6 just because it's got a bigger screen. The Nexus 5 camera never really impressed me, and no Motorola camera ever has either. Aside from the boosted resolution of the Nexus 6, results here aren't consistent. Sometimes the last year's model renders the better shot, and sometimes it's this year's. After a few good ones in a row, you might start to think the Nexus 6 has fixed the Nexus 5's sometimes harsh exposure issues, but then another look shows you otherwise. In low light, the Nexus 6 initially seems to do much worse than the 5, but then you switch on HDR and things look measurably better, with much less noise than on the 5's results. Around front with the selfie cam, the Motorola one delivers a shot that's wider, but not all that much better. We'll have video footage from the new Nexus in our full review coming soon. Broadly speaking, though, if given the two options, I'd take the Nexus 6. But there are several smartphone cameras out there I'd rather have than either of these. Hey, know what Motorola knows how to do really well? Make radios. And the Nexus 6 is a radio beast. While we haven't been able to test its reception in a true no-coverage area, because AT&T has Boston so well blanketed, the spec sheet tells us the Nexus 6 packs Bluetooth 4.1, that's versus 4.0 on the Nexus 5, 2x2 MIMO support in Wi-Fi, and added 700 MHz bands for LTE. Maybe it's that latter point that gave the Nexus 6 an edge in upload speeds in a basement test, or maybe it's just packing better radios overall. Motorola also does speakers quite well, and if you, like me, don't always want to be chained to your earbuds, hearing the Nexus 6 front-firing speakers shout down the tinny side-mounted cans on the Nexus 5 is profoundly satisfying. The games we're using here, listed conveniently at the top of your screen as always, are more fun on the 6 because of the added sound quality and that <laughs> massive display. And while we're really not seeing the added processing power or the newer GPU of the Nexus 6 kick in because the Nexus 5 runs newer games just fine, it is handy to have the cutting edge specs for future proofing. So that's something to consider if you're a big gamer. As for how long you'll be able to play those games, it's a bit early for us to make judgments on the Nexus 6 battery life. We've only had it a couple days but it is looking pretty impressive compared to the smallish Nexus 5 power pack. The real difference here is Motorola's included Turbo Charger, which can charge the Nexus 6 more rapidly than most phones. We'll have the complete data on that, as well as some thoughts on call quality in our full Nexus 6 review. So as it should be, the Nexus 6 is a huge improvement over most aspects of the Nexus 5, and we expected that. The question, in part, is whether you're willing to switch to a phablet lifestyle to get it, to commit to two-handed use more often than not. If you are, then you need to decide if the extra money, the extra $300, is worth the jump. And even taking all the improvements into account, it's really tough to swallow that almost 100% increase in price. This comes down, then, to how you plan to buy your next Nexus. If all you need is a capable, functional stock Android smartphone to last you through the year, and you want or need to buy it off contract, the Nexus 5 is still a respectable, if dull, option. But if you're shopping through a carrier store and you're going to get all the benefits of a carrier subsidy with your top-of-the-line purchase, well then the Nexus 6 starts making a lot more sense, as long as you can live with a two-year contract. Again, folks, this is not our full review. Stay tuned to Pocket Now in the week of December 1 for our complete take on the Nexus 6, and be sure to throw a thumbs up our way and share this video if you enjoyed it. Till next time, this has been Michael Fisher with Pocket Now, Captain Two Phones on Twitter, urging you to keep your speakers front and your branding bold. We'll see you next time.